If you're struggling to break 90, then the club featured in today's video is gonna make that task a whole lot easier. You see, golf is hard, but we can tend to overcomplicate matters. In recent weeks, I did a video suggesting you only need seven clubs and perhaps not the 14, but in today's video, I'm gonna go one step further. I'm gonna suggest if you get good with this one club, and I guarantee you'll start to break 90 regular. But first of all, let's establish the problem. You see, the first problem is you choose to play clubs that you feel are the ones that you're supposed to. For example, in almost all cases, if it isn't a par three, I can guarantee you pretty much always select driver, even though it is the most difficult club for any golfer to control. And that mindset is simply based on the fact we feel we've got to hit the ball as far as humanly possible despite many other options that could produce far better results. So the simple fact is we need a change in mentality and we need to adopt an approach and look at a club that could be far better option, not only from the tee, but from the fairway and from around the greens. It's time this one went out of the bag. And instead, I need to swap it for one of these things instead. That's pretty much perfect. It's also likely to become one of the most versatile golf clubs that you'll ever put in your golf bag. That club is in fact a seven wood. And if you're serious about lowering your handicap, then you really need to consider putting one of these clubs in your golf bag. So what is it that is so appealing about a seven wood? Apart from the fact how versatile I've already shown you it is, and I'm gonna play from the fairway, I'm also gonna play from the rough, which further exposes just why this seven wood is so versatile. But I wanna compare it to driver, first of all. You've seen two tee shots, we found the fairway, and they've done all the things that is very difficult to do with a driver, and what's the reason for that? Well, first of all, the control element. I've got a shaft that is 41, inches long 41 to 42 is pretty much standard for a seven wood and as you can see that sort of 45 inch shaft that's on this driver means that it's a lot longer it's a lot more difficult to control next element we're going to look at is loft 9 10 degrees is probably the average loft that most golfers play the more or less loft rather that you have on a golf club the more difficult it becomes to play 21 or 22 degrees is what you're likely to see on most seven woods. So the ability to launch the ball is also far easier. And as you've seen from the two tee shots, they've got the ball right up there in the air. I'm standing in the middle of the 18th fairway, which is a rarity here at Hollywell Golf Club. I'm gonna play one into the off the fairway lie now and just see what this seven wood does from a tight lie. Now, first of all, that ball flight is incredible. It's been picked off a fairly tight lie and it's something that I would be really or more uncomfortable with if you asked me to play a similar lofted iron. So if I'm reaching for a, maybe a four iron, perhaps even a three iron, trying to hit that shot with that kind of ball flight would really start to worry me. And I'm looking at percentages now and I'm considering, well, which one am I gonna reach for? And without doubt, I'm gonna get more positive results more often with that seven wood in hand. And if you do happen to find yourself in the rough, then there's no better club than a high lofted fairway wood, the seven wood, that 21 degrees, the bit of mass, the low CG placed way back is just gonna help you cut through the turf, get that ball popped up in the air. So again, that versatility once again becomes very prevalent. So there's another ball, high launching. Pretty much exactly where I'd wanna be. But the question is, what kind of compromise am I making off the tee in choosing a seven wood as opposed to my driver? Well, the compromise I'm not making is control. So we've already said the positives far outweigh that are using a driver in the control stakes, but arguably, yes, of course, I'm gonna give up distance. I'd probably hit the seven wood all out around sort of 200 yards. Now, my driver all out is probably a 235. They're carry distances. So I'm sacrificing 35 yards for being in the middle of the fairway. But don't forget what I'm talking about is breaking 90. So if you can hit this club, perhaps 160 yards each time consistently, then you and I both know if you can do that for 18 holes, 
then the likelihood is that's going to put you in a position where you are going to break 90. And the only other two clubs you're going to need is a wedge and a putter. So I think the first question you've got to ask yourself, are you really serious about lowering your handicap, getting better at golf and perhaps breaking 90? Because if you are, then there needs to be that change in mentality is the first thing before you put one of these in the bag. And that means choosing clubs that mean you're in play. And often that can be, let's get rid of the drive and let's see if we can replace it with something like this seven wood. Out of interest, this was the AI Smoke, the Paradigm model from Callaway. Uh, to be honest with you, I've never used this club before in my life until this morning. Any seven wood will do. They all pretty much do exactly the same and they do it very well. My own daughter has started playing golf recently and uh, she talked about what clubs she should put in the bag. And I said, well, without doubt, what you should definitely have is a seven wood for all the reasons that I've stated in today's video. So if you are serious about lowering that handicap, then without doubt, this is the one club that will help you do it. Right, I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, as ever, make sure you subscribe. I will ask again, hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video, because it makes a huge difference in the way in which this video performs and YouTube decides to promote it or not. Right, thanks for watching. See you soon.